All right, let's go ahead and continue on. So we had just added this socket, and now we're going to preview animation and find our idle hip. Idle rifle hip. So here is our idle rifle hip. I'm going to select the piece and rotate the socket and place it in the hand. There we go, and maybe I'll move it over just a tiny bit. All right, this needs to move a little tiny bit, and this doesn't have to be perfect. but it does have to be in the guy's hand. All right, that's good enough. So now let's save and close the mannequin. All right. Now let's go back to our character blueprint, viewport. And what I want to do is reset these settings to zero. Oh, big mistake. We need to be on the shotgun. Now reset. And we want to connect this shotgun socket. Shotgun right hand socket. And now it's placed. Compile it. And then when we play the game, Now it's much better. Now it's still a little bit off in his hand, but that's fine. I can just rotate it. I'll just do it later. Okay, let's go ahead and find the collision. And I want to take the collision off so there's no collision, so the gun doesn't hit like a door or a wall when you're turning. Compile it. Save it. Okay, in my content drawer, I'm going to open up my content folder, and I'm going to create a new folder called Blueprints. So right-click, New Folder, Blueprints. And let's go ahead and open it up. All right, we're going to make the gun fire now. So right click, add blueprint class, and we're going to select actor. And we'll name this BP for blueprint underscore bullet. All right, open it up. 
and now we're going to add a sphere. So this is going to be our bullet. Add sphere. We'll call this bullet. Okay. We don't want this to be a child of this default scene root. So just grab this and drop it in. Now we need to add projectile movement. So we're adding the movement. Add projectile movement. All right. Select projectile movement and mess with the speeds. Let's start at 3000 and a max speed of 3500. You can modify this to whatever you wish. It doesn't really matter. All right, once you've had that, compile and save. And let's go ahead and drop this in. Okay. Now we want to spawn the bullet. So in our third person character blueprint, let's go to the event graph. And we're going to go here to add input mapping. So mapping is basically giving the directions of what the character is supposed to do. So like our WASD is the moving, spacebar is jumping, and we're going to add the uh, left mouse click to shoot. So go ahead and click on this browse button. And we have the IMG default. Let's go ahead and open that up. Or IMC default, sorry. and check out mappings. So right now in the game we have mapped jump, move, and look. And we're gonna add another one. Go to our content drawer, open up actions, and you can see these correspond to these mappings right here. So what we need to do is add a new one. So let's go ahead and right click in open space, input, input action, and let's name this one IA for input action underscore shoot. All right, now let's make sure we're in our IMC default. All right, so here's our mappings. Let's go ahead and click plus. So we're gonna add a new one here. And we're gonna select shoot. Save it. And let's go ahead and close out of it for now. That's a lie, we're not gonna close out of it yet. Let's go back. Actually, we need to get back to our default. Okay, here we go. Open it up. And we need to actually map it what it's going to do. So let's click on the keyboard. And then let's switch. It's a left mouse, bu left mouse button. So now we have mapped that shoot is going to be the left mouse button. It is mapped. Save it. All right, let's go to our third person blueprint. All right, let's go all the way to the bottom under our jump. And this is where we're going to build our shooting system. So first thing we're gonna add is right click, enhanced. action, events, and we're going to choose IA shoot. So when this is triggered, 
we want to spawn the bullet, which the bullet is an actor. So pull this out. Spawn actor class. So we're going to spawn the actor, and the class is the bullet. And then let's go to our viewport and select the shotgun component. And what we're going to do is we're going to add the direction of the projectile or bullet to come out of. So click plus, and we're going to add an arrow. Select the arrow and name the arrow bullet or I'll put it call it bullet dir but it doesn't really matter okay all right let's go back to our event graph and we're going to drag our bullet direction. And now we are going to pull out from here, get world transform, get world transform. So in this get world transform is the location, rotation, and scale of this bullet and we want to break this open so that we have a separate location, rotation, and scale. So I just right click here, split struct pin, and do the same thing here. Right click, split struct pin, and we're going to connect the location. We're going to connect the rotation, but we are not going to connect the scale, and the reason being well, we can well, actually let's just test it. So right now, when I compile and play it, and I fire it, you can see the bullets are massive. They're out of control, completely out of control. They're blowing me back. So they are so huge. So we need to fix that by getting rid of this one. And we're going to rescale these to 0.2. So 0.2 all the way around. All right, let's check it out now. Much, much more reasonable. But when I press it, it's still shooting like nuts. Why is that happening? I'll tell you why. Let's go to our viewport. See this arrow right here? We are shooting from this location. So let's select the arrow, move it up. And we want to get this arrow to right at the edge of the shotgun. And it does not have to be super precise. This is not a uh, triple A game we're doing here. Oh man, but I mean, let's get it so it's at least reasonable. Jeez, at least. All right, good enough for real. Okay, compile it. Let's play it. All right, it's shooting right, but it's shooting a ton of them. 
And the reason for this is in our event graph, we have it triggered so that when we press this, it just shoots nonstop. So what we want to do is change that from triggered to started. So just right click, break the link, and then connect to started. Compile it, play it. All right, that's much better. But I'm shooting downward, right? So let's go back to our event graph. I'm sorry, viewport. And when we look at our arrow, I can see that it's shooting downwards. So we need to rotate that a little bit. Why is that going all the way over there? That's uncool. All right, compile it, play it. Much better, much better. Okay, so now we are shooting reasonably. Okay, let's go to our blueprint, event graph, and we have officially created a shooting system. Hurrah. So let's select all this, press C for comment, and then name this shooting system. All right, let's clean this up a little bit. Whoa. All right, so right now, my camera is directly behind my character. So let's go ahead and move this a little bit. Close out collision because we're not searching that anymore. Click on camera boom. And then we can see in our camera, we can zoom in or out to get closer or farther away from the character. Let's do it at 300. And then maybe move it over just a little bit so it's not directly behind the, uh, the player. Compile it and let's see what, how that looks. That's much better. I can see the shoot, I can see the shooting more. Right, I can see the gun better. So that'll work. Now, our guns are sticking to the wall. We don't want that. So what we're gonna do in our bullet blueprint, go to the event graph, and we're gonna right click add event and the event is called event hit all right so when the object hits something we want it to destroy actor compile it play it And now it disappears. So that's cool. All right, now that we have our weapon system done, let's go start messing around with the map. File, new level, basic.
create. All right, we can see we've got a bunch of stuff here already. My player start. I'm going to move it up a little bit. A directional light. A sky atmosphere. Skylight. Cloud. So what I want to add here is a cube. Just dragging it in. And I'm going to make it big enough so that the player can stand on it. Alright, let's see. Alright, it works. Okay, so I have my cube. I'm going to go ahead and add a material to it. And then I'm going to copy and paste it and then move the second one over. And what I want to do is I want to put a platter here so that he can uh, ride across. Let's go ahead and save everything, file, save all, and let's add a new folder in here. Right click, new folder, levels, open it up. And I'm going to call this level one. Save it. Okay, so now let's go ahead and open up our content drawer. And let's go to our blueprints. And we're going to create a platform blueprint that we're going to write across. Right click, blueprint class, actor. BP for blueprint underscore platform and open it up all right so what we want to do is add a cube in here so add cube and let's make it look like a platform that's a little bit high so I'll just change it in here. All right, that works. Compile it. Let's go to our level. And let's go ahead and drag that platform into our level. And it is ridiculously small. So let's go ahead and change that. Go back to our blueprint. Where is it? And I'm going to change my scale to five and five, but keeping that point one. Compile. All right, that's much better. All right. I think this jump is too easy, so let's go ahead and move this over some. There we go. Okay, there we go. All right, next, let's go to our platform blueprint. And we're gonna make this, this platform go across back and forth. So platform blueprint, 
we want to add interp to movement interp to movement Okay, so what this interp to movement is going to do is allow us to set one point where it starts and then one point where it ends and then have it go back and forth. So let's go to our control panel in details, control, and I've got my control points. So I want to add two of these, right? A start and a finish. So add element, add element. And I've got my first one. I want this at zero, zero, zero. And position is relative to where you place it in the world. Right? So it's going to be, the, the zero, zero, zero is going to be where you place it. And then our second one. We want it to move somewhere on the X, Y, Z plane. So I am going to go left and right. I see down here my Y is this way. So I'm going to modify the Y. Go BP platform. My second position, this is X, this is Y. Let's try 400 and see how that goes. Compile it. Level. Where am I pointed? Okay, my player. All right, let's play it. All right, it clearly is not even close to long enough. That's okay. Let's go to platform. Let's go 600. Compile it. Play it. All right, that's much better, but still needs to be a little longer. No big deal. Let's go ahead and go to our blueprint. And let's change this from behavior type one shot to ping pong and let's try 700 so ping pong means it's going to go back forth back forth back forth compile it test it play it it's kind of fast so let's go to our platform our blueprint and let's change the duration. Let's slow it up a little bit. Compile it. Test it. Yeah, that's much more my speed. All right. It needs to go a little bit longer as well. Let's go 750. Compile. Test it. That'll work. All right. Next, let's go ahead and copy this one, paste it, move it over, and then let's copy a platform, paste it, and it's going this way. So we want to move it this way, move it this way. And then we want to rotate it because currently it's going to be going this way. So rotate. All right, let's take this test. All right, that is pretty good. 
actually, let's see if this goes too far. All right, this one goes too far over. So let's go ahead and move this back. And what we're going to do in another lesson is we're going to set a variable so that we can set how far these go for each um, each one instead of just a standard length or distance. My bad. But for now, let's just scooch this over. Save it all. And call it. Nice job.